Luke chapter number 10, a familiar story in the Bible, but one that needs our attention this morning. We begin reading in verse number 30, the Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite. When he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, do thou likewise. So let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're so thankful, Lord to be in the house of God this morning. Now, Father, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of young people whose lives have been changed. And, Lord, we're thankful you're in the life-changing business. And, Lord, we're thankful for the good singing we've enjoyed. We're thankful for the good fellowship we've had with thy people. And now it's preaching time. And, Lord, we stand in a place where no man can stand alone. Lord, we realize without you we can do nothing. So we're asking for you to show up and manifest yourself in a powerful and a mighty way. Pray you'd speak to every heart. We pray that you'd put a hedge about us, and we certainly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. We pray you'd bind the powers of hell. Lord, we know the devil would like nothing more than to deceive and distract and disrupt the service. So we pray you'd bind him and his imps. We pray you'd give victory, you'd give hope, you'd give help this morning. We certainly pray if there's somebody in our midst unsaved, lost without God, today would be the day of their salvation. Now, Father, you know, Lord, what we stand in need of. And I pray you'd speak to every heart. I pray that one that's struggling, you'd strengthen them. That one that's low, you'd lift them up. That one that is facing adversity, you would... uh, uh, certainly help them to see through faith they can overcome in anything. And Father, we also pray that you'd be with those that are sick and afflicted, those that would love to be here and couldn't be here. We pray for Brother Phil, you'd help him today. Lord, uh, it just doesn't seem like church without Brother Phil being here, and I pray for him. I do pray, Father, for Miss Marcy, you touch her in the hospital. Be with those that are traveling, be with Miss Debbie's friend, Sean. And Lord, we certainly pray for our preacher friends who are preaching now. You'd anoint them and empower them. Lord, bless every true church that's preaching the word of God today. God, help us to stand strong in these days that we might see God do great and mighty things. Uh, God, get glory to your glorious name. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us this day. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to this man. The Bible says a certain man, uh, he left Jerusalem, he went down to Jericho. Can I say this certain man went down? Anytime you leave the place of God heading a different direction, you're going down. There's a lot of folks that had good intentions for their lives. Uh, They might have followed after a job. They might have followed after family. They might have followed after uh, 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 any number of things. But friend, if you leave God out of the equation, you're headed down. Uh, We find this man went down. Uh, uh, Can I say once he headed towards Jericho, he became devastated. Uh, He fell among thieves, uh, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, uh, and left him half dead. Uh, Can I say whenever you leave God out of the equation, you can bank it, devastation is headed your way. Uh, 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 Listen, uh, you and I are no match for the devil. Uh, uh, He's stronger than we are. Uh, He's wiser than we are. Uh, And friend, uh, he 
lies in wait and waiting to deceive. The Bible says, whosoever breaketh the hedge, uh, the serpent biteth him. Uh, best place you, uh, you and I could ever stay is around the things of God. Uh, uh, put God first. Uh, uh, let God be the center of our lives. Uh, I want to be as close to Jesus as I can get. Uh, and when the devil sets his sight on me, I want to jump in the lap of Jesus. Uh, I don't want to be found anywhere away from him. Uh, when the enemy shows up, this man uh, uh, became devastated after he went down. Uh, and then we notice that he is, uh, uh, the Bible said there in, in verse number 30 that they left him half dead. They left him half dead in a ditch. Hmm. Can I say that's what the devil will do to folks? He'll make you think you're missing out on something. He'll show you that the world is having a good time. He always shows you the billboard of the pleasures of life, but he never shows you the end result. Mm. And could I say that this fellow thought he was missing out on something at Jerusalem headed to Jericho. And on the way, he ran into trouble. It left him half dead. I, as I'm standing here today, my mind is reeling on folks that used to sit in these pews. Today they're out of church, and their life is just a shadow, a mere shadow of what it once was. The thief coming up, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to destroy every one of us. Especially if you're saved. He don't want you to lead anybody else to God. But I've got good news. Even though the devil wants to destroy you, and what he'll do if you walk away from God, he'll, he'll absolutely make a train wreck, a shipwreck of your life. But Jesus comes to give life, and life more abundantly. Now notice something about this. I'm interested in, in these three men that came and looked at this fellow left half dead. Notice in verse 31, we find in a certain... Uh, and by chance there came a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. This priest is a picture of modern Christianity. He didn't want to. He didn't want to get involved. And can I say, many folks that name the name of Christ see somebody hurting, they don't want to get involved. See somebody laying in a ditch, they don't want to get involved. So, well, that's none of my business, and they just go on by. How many folks do we pass by? Hmm? How many folks need help and we don't give them the time that they deserve? We see this priest. He's a picture of modern Christianity. He didn't want to get involved. Notice verse 32. And likewise the Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. This Levite's a picture of re religion. He comes and he doesn't just pass by like the priest. He comes and looks at him, stands over him. He starts judging him. He's very pharisaical. He starts looking at this guy, judging him. He passes on by. You see, the priest didn't want to get involved, but the Levite didn't deem that man important enough for him to help him. Just looked at him like he was nothing. How many times do we look at folks and don't deem them important enough for our time? Mm -mm. Getting real quiet in here. But then notice the Samaritan, verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. When he saw him, had compassion on him, went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The Samaritan certainly is a picture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He thought he was invaluable. He was going to spare no expense to take care of this one. Mm -hmm. Now let that sink in. Mm -hmm. You see, everybody's invaluable to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, What profit the man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Your soul is more important than the whole world. But unfortunately, many times we don't realize that. We don't realize the soul of others are so invaluable, but Jesus always realizes it. Hmm? Uh, I got to thinking about this and got to thinking about Jesus 
as a picture of the Samaritan coming to this fella, seeing how invaluable he was. This is what I want to preach on for just a few minutes this morning. I want to preach on when Christ came to your ditch. Hmm? Huh? You remember what you were before Christ came along? Remember how wounded you were? Remember how messed up you were? Remember how hopeless you were? Remember how nobody cared for you? Uh, remember how no one was concerned about your soul? Uh, remember how your life was spiraling out of control? Uh, but Jesus came to the ditch you were laying in. Aren't you glad he came by? Uh, boy, I'm glad for the third Saturday night of March, uh, 1974, uh, when he came by where I was, uh, and he cared enough. Uh, let me know he died for me, uh, and that he'd saved me, and he'd changed my life. Uh, I'm glad he came by my ditch, my dear friends. Uh, Hey, when Jesus came by your ditch, you know what he did? Same thing he did for this fella. Hmm? When he came by your ditch, you know what he did? He had compassion. Look again at verse 33. Huh? And when the certain Samaritan, uh, as he journeyed, came to where he was, saw him and had compassion on him. Uh, do you realize the Bible says in Jeremiah that you've been loved with an everlasting love? Uh, you realize when Jesus came by, uh, he didn't look at your faults. Uh, he didn't look at your failures. Uh, he didn't look at what you'd committed. Uh, he didn't look at all your crimes and all the judgments against you. Uh, he didn't look at all your sin and all your wickedness. Uh, he looked at you in eyes of love. Uh, he said, I paid their sin debt. Uh, I love them. Uh, I'll change them. Uh, hey, aren't you glad? He came to you not when judgmental spirit, uh, but a loving spirit. Mm -hmm. If anybody could have judged us, it would have been him. But he didn't do that. He just loved you. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad? He said, whosoever will may come. Drink of the water of life freely. Aren't you glad that he had that kind of compassion on you and I? Well, I'm glad. Who are we that the King of Glory would be even concerned about? Let alone come by where we were and looked at us with eyes of compassion. He had compassion on him. Can I say this? When Christ came to your ditch, he took care of you. That's what he did this fella. He took care of him. He didn't leave him like he found him. Can I say in the scriptures, nobody ever came to Jesus and left the same way. Mm. Uh, they either left uh, excited and headed to heaven or they left perplexed, mad, uh, and headed straight to hell because they didn't do what he had to say. But can I say that Jesus took care of this fella? Hmm? Just like he took care of you and me. Hmm? Uh, notice uh, he addressed his scars. Verse 34, the Bible says, uh, And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Aren't you glad he addressed your scars, the scars that sin had left behind? Hmm? He poured into them oil and wine. Back in those days, olive oil was not only for lighting lamps. Uh, it was not only for cooking, uh, uh, but the emollients in it they used for healing purposes. Uh, and he poured in oil in his wounds. Uh, 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 can I say the oil's a picture of the Holy Spirit of God? Uh, aren't you glad when you got born again, he sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise? Uh, uh, aren't you glad the Holy Spirit of God convicted you of sin, uh, drew you to the Savior, uh, sealed you until the day of redemption? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, through the Savior's stripes we've been healed? Aren't you glad? Hallelujah for the goodness of God. But he also poured in wine. That's a picture of the blood of Christ. Aren't you glad uh, your sins have been washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ? Uh, aren't you glad you bear them no more? Uh, aren't you glad your sins are not hid behind His back? Uh, aren't you glad they're not buried somewhere uh, where somebody can dig them up? Uh, but aren't you glad your sins are gone this morning? Uh, aren't you glad, hallelujah, He's forgotten them never to remember them anymore? Uh, mm, I'm glad He took care of you, dressed your scars. Some of you look pretty good this morning. When Jesus came by your ditch, you didn't look that way. Some of you were in a mess. Mm. Uh, some of you were so sinful and so wicked and so ungodly, even your family wouldn't have sat with you on a church pew. But look at you today. You're in the family of God. God's changed your life. Uh, some of you used to be drunks. You're not drunks anymore. Uh, some of you used to be addicts. You're not addicts anymore. Uh, uh, some of you used to be loose. You're not loose anymore. Are you listening? Uh, hey, God's a good God. Uh, he addressed your scars. huh? 
Can I say this? He not only addressed his fellow scars, he addressed his shortcomings. Look what it says in verse 34. It says that he went to him and he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Now look at this. And he set him on his own beast. Can I say, friends, where Jesus found you, where he found you, you couldn't get out of the ditch. But he got you out. Hmm? Uh, some of you, your life was spiraling so far, you didn't even know where you was headed. But he knew what direction to point you to, didn't he? Aren't you glad he got you out of your ditch? Aren't you glad he got you out of your old life? Uh, aren't you glad that he changed you forevermore? Uh, can I say he dealt with his shortcomings? There's some things you couldn't do. Hmm. Let me go over here and talk to Brother Donald. You ain't done nothing all day. Uh, is it not your testimony that you couldn't quit drinking till you met Jesus? Amen. You started drinking from another well. You're not a drunk anymore, huh? Huh? He just put you on his beast. Huh? Handled your short. You couldn't, but he could. Hmm? Uh, friend, there's a lot of folks say, boy, I'd get saved if I quit this, but I can't quit that. Friend, you'll never quit it, huh? But I got good news. If you get saved, he'll change you. He changes your desires. Uh, hey, I do all the drugs I want to do. I just don't have any desire to do them. Uh, I drink all the booze I want to drink. I just don't have a desire for that. Uh, hey, he changes you. Things I used to hate, uh, I love now. Uh, I used to hate some of them hymns in that hymn book. Uh, seemed like it took forever to sing them and they were draggy. Uh, Farther along will... That was a good nap song for me. But oh, I got saved. You know what happened? I love that song. Uh, hey, I don't understand all the ills in this world. I don't understand uh, why bad things happen to good people. Uh, but farther along, we'll understand it all. Uh, and friend, it won't even matter because we'll be in the glory of God. Uh, and the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared uh, to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, but listen, uh, God changes you. Uh, he handles your shortcomings. Things you can't do for yourself, He can do it. Mm. He's a big God today. Bigger than your problems. Can I say, He not only addressed your scars like He did this fella, and your shortcomings like this fella, but He addressed your surroundings. Look again in verse 34. He set Him on His own beast and brought Him to an end and took care of Him. That end is a picture of the church. It's God's will for every born-again believer to be in a fundamental Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Mm. Not to be in a church. There's a lot of things called themselves a church, but they're not one that represents the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't found it, found, he, he didn't found it find it, start it, however you want to say it. Wasn't founded by Him, and He don't support it. But it's God's will for everybody to be a part of local church. And can I say something? When you're not involved and regularly a part of the local church, your life will be a mess. Just mark her down. Hmm? The church is God's government on earth. And every Bible believer needs to be fitly framed in a local church. You'll get fed there. You'll get sustained there. You'll get help there. You'll find a, a, a community of believers that uh, 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 will embrace you. Uh, the Bible says uh, 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 that it's a joy and a thrill to be accepted in the beloved. Uh, what a, part of a privilege to be a part of the Lord's church. Uh, uh, what a privilege uh, uh, to have fellowship with like-minded believers uh, 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 who uh, may be going through some things like you're going, but through uh, uh, trusting God and through uh, uh, turning it over to God you'll draw strength from God and each other what a blessing to be a part of a church hmm? listen folks that are not active in a the church they're weak Christians and they're out of the will of God you're welcome uh, when you're not where God wants you you lay out a church your life's going to be a mess but when you put God first and you get involved and you let God help you through the church you'll find it's home away from home. Hmm. Y'all thank God for the church. Jesus loved it and gave himself for it. It's wonderful. Can I say, 
God not only gave us the church, he gave gifts in the church. He gave pastors and teachers and evangelists and missionaries through the church. But God gave a pastor to watch over your soul. How can he watch over your soul if you're not involved? You're not there. Hmm? You're missing out on what God intended for you. Matter of fact, he tells the innkeeper, take care of him till I come back. The church is important. God took care of him. And God took care of you when he came by your ditch. huh? Uh, he's looking out for you. You know, there's so many things God provides for us, but we live beneath our privileges. We take, don't take full advantage of them. God help us to take full advantage of everything God's got for us. huh? When Christ came to your ditch, he had compassion. He took care of you. huh? Can I say this? He made certain you were cured. That fellow didn't leave that in until he was whole. And I got good news for you. When Jesus comes back, he's come back for a bride without spot and wrink without wrinkle. And when we see him as he is, we'll be whole. And by the way, we're not checking out till he says it's time to check out. Hmm? Just thought I'd throw that out there, huh? Can I say something else? Jesus cultivated that man in that inn. When Jesus came by your ditch and he put you in the church, he cultivated you. Yeah. You know what the church is for? It's for your growth. Yeah. In the church, you'll get admonished. You will. Sometimes you'll find out you're not living right. You're not doing right. You're not talking right. You're not walking right. Thank God for a preacher who preaches to let you know. Yeah. But then you'll also be exhorted. You'll be charged up to be told what you're supposed to be doing with your Christian life. And then sometimes you're edified, you build up, you're patted on the back, and you're blessed. But God cultivates you in the church. Uh, you learn about Jesus in the church. You learn how to walk and how to dress and how to carry yourself and how to talk to folks and how to be a light to other folks uh, so others can come in the fold and you learn everything you need to know in the church I'm a firm believer some of the best counseling you'll ever get is not from a psychiatrist it's from behind the pulpit Amen. Hmm? Amen. thank God for the church now, there are sometimes issues pop up in our life we need to sit down with the preacher and find out what the Bible says about it that's wonderful but I found most of the counseling I, I've, I, I have sit down with folks I've already addressed it they just wasn't listening. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Huh? Can I say something else? What Jesus did for this fellow, he did for you, he paid the cost. Yeah, look at verse 35. Look at it, look at it. I'm about done, I'm about done. It's almost time for lunch. Said, and on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay. Huh? And I say, the Lord paid the cost. He paid for your salvation. He paid for the church. Uh, he's paid for everything you got. Matter of fact, everything you got came from him. Hmm? You say, I work, and I, who do you think gave you the job? Who do you think gave you the health to work the job? Who do you think puts breath in your body so your lungs beat? Who do you think keeps your heart beating? Huh? It all comes from him. It all comes from the hand of God. Uh, Everything we've got, we've been blessed with by Almighty God. Huh? You say, well, I don't have anything. Well, maybe not putting God first. Hmm? There's some things in this Bible, and I don't mean to get on this, but I'm here, so I might as well get on it, Jordan. Uh, kind of got on it Wednesday night, kind of hurt the service, so might as well hurt this one too. If you don't put God first, you can't expect God to bless you. And in Malachi chapter 3, it tells us to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. And if you don't pay your tithes, God's not going to bless your life. But he did say that if you'll bring your tithes and offerings, he said, prove me now that if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, you cannot contain. Huh? I, I proved him, Brother Josh. There's been times when I, I had my tithe or I was to take it and put it in my gas tank. I just gave it to God. And lo and behold, somebody come up and shake my hand, give me money for the gas tank. You just can't outdo God. But I guarantee if I'd have put it in my gas tank, my car would have broke down. Hmm? You just can't, you can't outdo God. Put God first. He's already paid the cost, and he'll bless you beyond your understanding, beyond your deserving. 
I hadn't told this story in a while. Some of you never heard it. When Miss Nett and I first got married, and Mom, you're over here. I can't find you. She's always sitting right there. You, you, you folks from Edge took my wife's seat. I can't find her. And brother, you don't look like my wife, all right? Whoo. I looked up and saw him. I thought, under God, put my glasses back on. No, that ain't her. <laughs> we first got married. Like every young married couple, you, you just don't have much. You're just starting out. It amazes me. Couples today, well, they want everything that you and Jack worked for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? They want to start out that way. We didn't have much. And we, like a lot of young couples, going to have to go to the laundromat. We used to work and do our laundry. Well, the pastor of this church's wife, Miss Lietta, you knew her. Miss Lietta knew a family that had a tragedy in their life. Their mother and father died in a car wreck. And, and they was wanting to get rid of their mom's and dad's stuff, and they had a washer and dryer. They sold us both of them for $50. $50 for the pair. I told Miss Annette, I said, if they last six months, that's better than going to the laundromat. I don't want to see Melissa down there, huh? That's before I knew Melissa. I didn't, she wasn't working there. She was driving the dump truck then. But listen, she did. But anyway, we had that washing machine. I know we had it 10, 11 years. It just kept running and running. I think it had the Maytag man in it. It just kept running. <laughs> Finally, I got tired of looking at it, and I went and bought a new set because it just got somewhere in a junkyard. That washer and dryer is still running somewhere. <laughs> I'm just telling you, God blesses faithfulness. Uh, he'll let your stuff run longer, last longer, wear longer, do better, because he's a good God. Yeah. He knows how to take care of us, huh? Can I say this? He paid the cost. When he came by your ditch, he did so much for you. What do you think this fella did after he got out of the inn? You ever wonder about that? I have a vivid imagination. I'm thinking, that fella that got so beat up and left half dead, when that Samaritan changed his life, I, I just kind of think that he just kept coming back to the inn hoping the Samaritan would come back by. He said, Preach, why you come to church so much? I'm just hoping the Samaritan comes by. Yeah. I just want to thank him. Yeah. I just want to love on him. Yeah. I just want to spend some more time with him. Yeah. Change my life. Hmm? But I imagine this fella. Everywhere he went, told everybody about the Samaritan. Said, oh, there's a Samaritan. If you ever get a chance to see him, <laughs> don't let him pass you by. Maybe he ran into old blind Bartimaeus and said, there's a fellow named Jesus. If he comes by, somebody told Bartimaeus about Jesus. Uh, because when he heard that it was Jesus coming, he began to shout, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Son of David, have mercy on me. Uh, hey, the religious crowd, that Baptist crowd's going, hey, keep it down. We don't act like that around here. Uh, and he cried the greater, the much more, uh, Jesus, have mercy on me. And the Lord bid him to come. Uh, and the Lord uh, healed him of his blindness. Uh, maybe it was this guy that told Bartimaeus about Jesus. I don't know. Huh? I know one thing. We're to share Christ with everybody. We're also to show everybody the change Christ has made in us in hopes that they'll get saved by Christ like we did. When's the last time you thanked Him for coming by your ditch? Maybe this morning... He came by your ditch, but you haven't taken full advantage of everything he's done in your life. You've tried it for so long, living it your way. You're, you're like this fella in the ditch today. Your life's a beat up, messed up mess. Maybe you need to come to Christ and say, Lord, help me. He said if you come to him, he'd know why he's cast you out. Maybe you're here today and you've never been saved. You're lost. And you... You came in this church this morning maybe seeking some help. I've got good news. Help is found in Jesus. 
moment we're going to have an invitation we're going to invite you to come say preacher I don't know how, uh, how to give my life to Jesus I don't know anything about being saved I don't know anything about that you come we'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved Jesus changed your life today uh, listen if he changed my life he can change anybody's life he's no respecter of persons he loves you and he cares about you maybe you've been saved maybe you come service after service but you leave it here you need to let everybody know what Jesus did for you when he found you in the, in the ditch where he found you. Maybe there's been some things in your life you haven't put him first in. Maybe you need to get this altar, tell him you're sorry, and tell him help you. Give you grace to put him first. He will. He's got a storehouse of grace, friends. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to undergird you. He wants to do great things for you. Why don't you let him? See... The only thing God can't do is step over your will for his will. He made man a free moral agent and he bids every man to come and take of his bountiful supply. But he will not, he's a gentleman, he will not force himself on anybody. But he bids everybody to come. If you're here today and you're not saved, he's come by your ditch today. He wants to change the mess of your life. But friend, he can if you won't let him. You can make every excuse. If that fellow laying there would have said, no, I don't need the oil, I don't need the wine, I don't need the help, he'd have laid in that ditch and died. And friend, if you reject Jesus Christ, there'll come a point you'll reject him one last time, then you'll die and go to hell, friend. Don't turn him away while he may be found. Some are coming and getting some help this morning. Maybe this morning God spoke to your help or your heart, and you need some help as well. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe it's come by your ditch today. Maybe you're just living for God in the center of God's will, and you just want to come tell him you love him. You just want to come tell him thank you. Being good to you. Maybe he's revealed something in your life he's not pleased with. You want to come get it taken care of. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Help folks in this invitation. Lord, if there's somebody here today unsaved, Lord, I pray you'd convict them. I pray they'd see their lost condition. I pray they'd see themselves in that ditch, lost without God. And then, God, I pray you'd give them a little glimpse of the future. They'll spend their eternity in the charred regions of the dam, paying for their own sins and misery and torments forevermore because they have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And then God, give them grace. Help them to step out by faith and come and trust in the Lord. God, I pray for your people, Lord, that know better. God, I pray they'd come. Just get things made right. Lord, there may be somebody especially needs some help around here today. God, I pray they'd come. Let the Lord help them. Lord, do a, a wonderful work around here. Change lives. Well, thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.